I want to, I don't want to say move through this quickly because it's not about moving quickly, but I want to be efficient. So uh, I'm going to bring the mayor up and then we're going to have a conversation with all of you about the arts. So let's, uh, it's his lunch. He cooked everything. He made all the food. Let's welcome uh, Mayor Nahed Nenshi. Come on up here, Mayor. Those carrots, those carrots are very challenging. <laughs> Got to get them exactly the right amount of Christmas. Thanks, Dave. It's so let's good Let's hear to be it for here. Dave. The third favorite Calgarian. <laughs> yeah, but if I bring my own timpani, I can get up to second on a good day. I don't know. That Lima Coelho is good at leg wrestling. I know. I know. Uh, we are gonna why, why are we here, Dave? <laughs> that's a, that's a, such a good question. <laughs> Actually, we are here partly because of Franca. Now, Franca helped sort of set up the conversation we we're about to have around the arts. Tell us a bit about so, it. So, Franca, who is here with us today, is my assistant. Many of you know that she's the one who keeps my life in order. And uh, does a great job. Thank you. Because when mayor's happy, everybody's happy. Um, but the real reason that we are talking about Frank and embarrassing her today is because we were throwing around ideas for what we wanted to talk about in the lunch today. It's a lunch for arts champions. And as you know, the goal of this lunch is to convince and encourage all of you in the room to continue to champion the arts through attending, through promoting, and through investing. And I'm going to say a little bit more about your homework at the very end of our conversation today. Randy Ferguson did a bunch of it for me already. Thank you, Randy. That was not a typical corporate sponsor speech, by the way. That was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> but before Franca got stuck with me, she was an occasional arts attendee. She'd go to plays once in a while. She'd be out there in the community, and she thought of herself as kind of an arts person. And then the first time we had this mayor, this version of the Mayor's Lunch for Arts Champions, I invited her to get her to know the community a bit better. And today she said, oh, this is great. Everyone's saying hi to me. They all know me. I feel like part of the community. But she asked a really interesting question early on in all of this, and that's really what we wanted to explore today, which is as she got to know more people in the community, she said, wow, I didn't realize how much it takes to be able to actually make art happen. Whether it's performing art or visual art uh, in our community, what kind of support you need from people that we don't see on the stage or we don't necessarily see painting the picture. And how does all of that come together? And that's really what an arts champion is about. It's not really just about people who write the check. The people who write the check are very, very, very important. But it's about all the other ways in which the arts can be supported. And so I was going to give a speech about that. And then Dave and I thought, actually, we have people in the room who know what they're talking about. As th those of you that know the mayor and I know that we like to speak, not necessarily knowing what we're talking about. Okay, 50% of us don't know what we're talking about. Uh, not like that Ken Lee McQuaylo. <laughs> But there's people in the room who can. So we came up with, and we were thinking about, what are some questions that, if you don't know the art scene, you might not know? Like, how much does it actually cost to put on an opera? Or if you're doing a big musical, what's the price tag for that? And so we thought we'd ask. Now, we know Bob McPhee's here. He runs uh, the Calgary Opera, and a great guy, and a great champion of our city. So wherever you are, Bob, I know they're going to bring a mic to you. Uh, I, I, there you are. I did some research on uh, the opera, and by that I mean Sherry did some research on the opera. Uh, $5.9 million budget, they employ 20 full-time employees, two part-time employees, and they end up working with about 150 people on contract depending on the shows they do, and they do a lot. Bob, tell us a bit about the cost to put on a, an opera. The cost and what it takes with people to do yeah. a big, big show like you do at the Jubilee. The cost. Um, hmm. Why I don't mean the cost to your hair. To go first. Uh, well, there's uh, two famous quotes about opera. One is, um, the most expensive no noise known to mankind is opera. <laughs> that was Moliere. And the other quote is, the only thing more expensive than opera is war. So when we start off with that point, uh, the average of uh, production three shows at the Jubilee. And when I say average, this is not new sets or new costumes, it's existing repertoire. $800,000 for three nights. Wow. About 150 to 200 contract employees. If you get into uh, new works, which uh, 
I am very proud that we have a strong reputation in Canada for doing the most new works and creations. You, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, that 800,000 goes up to 1.5 million and then can go through the roof. So that's the cost. Uh, what can you do for us other than write more checks? Um, well, and, and we've been saying the word champion. I think it's about being champions on yeah. our behalf in the community, with other citizens of the community, and with all of the three levels of elected officials. Uh, I'm sure many of my colleagues are in the same boat. It's 10 years since we've seen an increase in funding. So there's my plug. There. Be an advocate with our elected officials and all of the citizens in your community on behalf of the arts and the role that it plays. Bob Thanks. McPhee. Thanks, Bob. Bob, Bob, I have one little thing that I want to highlight. Uh, I know he told me I wasn't allowed to ask any follow-ups because we're late, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right. So 800,000 bucks a night, more if no, it's no, a new for show. for three nights, for three oh, sorry, nights. sorry, for three nights, for three nights. That's what I meant to say, sorry. Say a million bucks on average, because new shows are way more than that. Yeah. You are, you do great work. You sell out every show in a 2,000 person house. There's no way that you can actually make that budget on your box office, is there? No, no. I, uh, you know, I've often been asked by board members, uh, great, we were sold out. How much did we make? And in the arts, it's not how much we make, it's how little we lose. <laughs> so uh, there, it's impossible on box office to uh, break even without uh, government support, community support, individual support, contra relationships. It takes all of it to bring it together in all of our art forms, not just ours. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Bob. Well so, done. So Dave, that's a big company. Right. Obviously, we have lots of people who do not have $800,000 budgets. No. Uh, Nikki Loach, I know you're here somewhere, runs Quest Theatre. Quest Theatre uh, tours Alberta, putting on all kinds of shows, oftentimes musical and often not. Where are you, Nikki? Wherever you may be, stand up, be proud, and tell us a bit about your sense of Over your butt and what it takes to do I'm your over shows. Over here, Dave. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Do you see me? You don't there see you me are. from the stage. You look Hi. beautiful. How are you? Well, tell us. Well, thanks. Yeah. I'm good. Good. So you want to know how much yeah. touring theatre for young audiences costs in Alberta? Um, again, I will echo uh, Bob with uh, if you pull a, a piece off the shelf without any sort of development, a sort of it, it, it does depend. But if you pull it off the shelf and you do it, uh, we figured it would cost about thirty-five thousand dollars for a tour um, uh, in, that goes into the school systems yeah. around Alberta. Now that jumps when we go into a national tour or an international tour because we're getting into that uh, market as well. And that will rise to about $80,000. Wow. Um, and on top of that is, you know, our operating costs on top of that, that's just for production costs. But mm -hmm. to actually keep the building running and salaries happening, there's probably $22,000 on top of that. Nikki, are you paying these people anything? <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> No, we, we do our best. Um, uh, actors going into the school system really do not earn a ton of money, and we're constantly trying to pay them more. Uh, but the, the reality is that the school systems don't have a lot of funding either to mm -hmm. pay yeah. for us to come in. So we're constantly trying to fill that gap between what the schools can afford and what it actually costs to create theatre. Wow. There's just... Another perspective, and I, we could talk forever, Nikki, but can we thank uh, Nikki Loach? Thank you so much. Thank you. And say hi to Chris, would you? Uh, okay, our, we want to talk about boards. A lot of people know that whether it's the opera, theater companies, a lot of them have boards. Do you get paid to be on a board? How do boards work and what do they do? <laughs> Wait, Not you're supposed to get paid to be on a board? <laughs> Bob McPhee just spit out his drink. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk to Donna Livingston. Uh, she runs the, the Glenbow, and a lot of you know that there's many people that work at the Glenbow. They have great um, programs, but they also have a board. So she's going to give us a bit of perspective on that. Where are you? In the back here. Hi, Donna. I'm going to talk vaguely this way and ask I you to I talk. I don't see her at all. Where, and we'll ask, tell us a bit about boards and how they work in your world. Um, our board is really amazing. We have 20 people on our board, and I would say that they are 
um, diverse, coming from a, a whole variety of things that support what Glenbow is trying to achieve. They're artists, they're art collectors, they're people knowledgeable in the field. But I think for me as a CEO, what they really bring is challenge. They, they challenge our ideas, they challenge, push us to go forward. They're relentlessly optimistic about the arts and supportive of what the arts really mean. And it's, they're business people, so they know that if you have a vibrant arts community, as been, has been said here, that it makes the whole city a much more meaningful place, and people are attracted and want to come because there's a fabulous art museum there. So those are the kind of things that um, our board brings to us. I think another important role is that they're kind of environmental scanners. <laughs> you know, they know what's happening out there. They see things in different areas of the community that we might not be aware of, so they bring that to the table. Um, we don't pay them. We give them a really bad museum coffee, and we don't pay parking or anything. <laughs> but <laughs> what they do it is the reason why they come, because they can go to an opening, they can see um, an art exhibit that will stop them absolutely in their tracks, mm. and they can bring their friends. They can also see 68,000 school children coming and making a difference um, through the arts. So. Um, we couldn't do it without them, and they're an amazing colleagues to have. A lot of them are at the table, and one of them bought the table today, so thank awesome. you. Awesome. That's so good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, and to all of those who volunteer on boards, many of you know that I was the chair of the board of what is now Arts Commons before I became the mayor, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a lot of love for people who give up their time to serve on boards. This next question is a super fun one, yeah. um, because it actually is a, it's a broader question, and it's about how arts organizations in the city co collaborate and cooperate with one another, but the question is extremely specific. Yes. Can I ask it? Go ahead, yeah. How come companies don't just rent costumes from somewhere? <laughs> Isn't there just like a major storehouse of costumes? <laughs> Shakespeare, witches, all in one place uh, that people can go to instead of having to develop stuff. So we asked, we thought, I think Susan McNair reads here. She's at Theatre Calgary, wherever you are. Hi, Susan, where are you? There you are, over here. So here's, a, here's an example. Uh, you guys have half a million, half a million, 500,000 pieces of costumes, including all the stuff you'd see at Christmas Carol, or uh, Little Prince, or all those sorts of things. So how does, how does costumes work for, for the arts? How do costumes work? Um, well, uh, Theatre Calgary and ATP, we share. We have a nice big room under the Max Bell Theatre that is full, I mean full, <laughs> of uh, costumes that have been on our stages. So we, um, we have a building, a piece in our building that we both use the costumes from and we lend to other companies. But then designers also want to create more costumes specific to shows and so we add more to that. But we don't have lots of witches because we only have witches. Because Franca has taken all of, no. <laughs> Oh, because we only it's have witches if we've joke. done a play that has witches, yeah. so we don't have those kind of, we mostly have clothes. I feel like there's a play coming up in the city, opening on March 20th, that has witches in it. Macbeth at the Shakespeare Company. We had Go ahead. fake witches earlier this fall, but they weren't dressed like witches. See? <laughs> but all of that, though, again, so that people know, you, you, go to, you go to see Christmas Carol and you think, somebody designed that, somebody made it, somebody mm -hmm. built it, somebody took care of it, somebody got it off that person after the show, cleaned it so that it didn't stink for the next show. All of those things happen, and people are hired to make that happen. Uh, and so Theatre Calgary is one example of that, but the, every theatre company in town, the ones we see here, uh, they all have to ma find a way to make that work. Thank you so much. And if much. you're doing a show like The Little Prince, which... Theatre Calgary just did to extraordinary success. Congratulations yeah. for taking that company betting risk uh, to Theatre Calgary, which is extraordinary. <laughs> that experience, the design is such an incredible part of that. I was so happy to see Anton mm -hmm. uh, on this stage as a young, thoughtful designer because when we experience the theatre, and as you all know, I love the theatre, mm -hmm. we have to experience the whole thing. It's not just the actors naked on the stage. Yeah. Well, not Michael's always. not with us anymore. Yes. Yeah. Um, but the whole design, the lights, the sound, the costume, those are real talented artists themselves that we don't always think about when we're newcomers mm -hmm. to this world. And speaking of artists, uh, uh, this next guy is uh, I'm a huge fan of, Michael Bernard Fitzgerald. 
and I'm just going to pick on you, Michael, but uh, his album released on Friday, I Want to Make It With You, used to be in the world of music, you, uh, you put out albums and you made bajillions of dollars and that's what you did. Now, there's no money in making an album, there's money in touring an album. So that's how you can do it. Well, he's put out nine albums uh, with labels and independently and live things. He puts on incredible shows, just finished a massive show at the Jack. Uh, and he did a show, Dave Kelly Live. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a great show. Uh, recently, where he... I heard it's good, but I haven't been able to go. <laughs> I'm just saying. You could have. Uh, <laughs> For those who saw the show, another inside joke. Another. He was snowed in New York, did mm. try to make it to us. Uh, but uh, first of all, uh, let's welcome Michael Bernard Fitzgerald. Hi, Michael. Nine albums at the age of 15, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Tell us a bit about uh, the world you need, and it's like you've toured across Canada, down to the Bahamas, you've done a lot of work, but as far as a, ca a city supporting music and supporting someone like you, wh what do you think is necessary to make that happen, or what helps you make that happen? Um, before I answer that, I actually was hoping that, uh, I was hoping that I got to be asked about the costumes. <laughs> um, what, what are the costs for your costumes? <laughs> well, no, I was, gonna, I was actually going to ask the, the, the representative from the Theatre Calgary, um, I was going to ask, uh, what, they, what do they do now that you don't uh, hand wash all the dance belts? <laughs> That's what I lost my job, right? <laughs> automation. It's yeah. an automation thing. It's a I got there's a machine now. I mean, don't it, get me started. Don't get me started. Nice <laughs> For those who don't know what a dance belt is, be happy you don't know what a dance belt <laughs> is. <laughs> If you don't think, know what a dance think, belt uh, is, and you've always wanted to see a guy in a thong, think a jock strap, but just more theatrical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, the the best way I feel like for people to support the musicians in this city is to uh, I, I feel like uh, we're in a time that people like to kind of curate their lives. They curate the the businesses they support and and the the clothes they wear. I I, I think that. Um, the best way to support it, even if you aren't in a position to buy the music, I, I think I think sharing that and making that something, getting behind an artist, I mm -hmm. think is the best way. I think even more more importantly than financially is the best way to, to help keep that art going and alive. You know, Michael, there are many things I love about you. Your talent, your musicianship, it's amazing. But what I think is super cool about you is how you bring other musicians and artists into the work that you do. Um, what's the maximum number of people that you have been on a stage with? Too many. Um, <laughs> no, we, uh, we performed, well, on Monday night, we performed with, with 300 people on stage at, at, in the finale. And uh, we, uh, we had about 15 minutes to prepare for that, too, which was always fun. Well, I'll never forget your concerts at the Jackson Concert Hall, one of the most moving musical experiences of my life, which started with just you and ended with just you. But in the middle, there was, what, a marching band, a full opera company, um, and just an unbelievable amount of local musicians. There must have been 500 people on stage with you. There was a lot. I, and those shows have been really fun uh, lately because it's, it's less about, at, in the beginning, we were just trying to make this big visual and this big sound. And, and now, we just uh, performed on the, uh, at the end of January. It's now so much more about community. So, you know, downstairs in the basement of the Jack Singer, we have uh, a curate, like a, a family-style taco supper, and then, and then we've got a cafe in one of the dressing rooms, and, and everyone gets to feel like the evening is their own. So it's, it's, uh, it's cool. And they get to play on stage with other musicians, form collaborations, get a chance to play with you. To me, that's one of the really exciting things about the Calgary arts community. Yeah. There are other places where the arts community is a bit dog-eat-dog. You know, they don't want one another to succeed. And what we see consistently here in the visual arts, in music, in performing arts, and the reason that artists tell me they move here for their career instead of leaving here to go do their career somewhere else is precisely because of that incredible support throughout the community. It's something that, that makes me smile every time I hear about it. It's amazing. And I know you're all thinking, oh, sure, Michael, yeah, it's all fine and good to have a bunch of music up there, but why don't you ever get, like, a bunch of spin class people up there? Well, he has. So, um... <laughs> His last concert, how many people spinning were on stage while you were playing? Too many. <laughs> Too many. Why not? Uh, let's talk about film. Uh, we're going to talk to Ramin right now, Ramin Ashradi Yazdi, who is a Calgary filmmaker, who, uh, I mean, that's another whole other art form that happens here. That well, first of all, let's say that's what you just watched, yeah. his work, and how great were those films. Yeah. Where are you? Where are he's, you? He's right there. Tell us a bit about, first of all, thank you for the work you did in making today happen. But tell us a bit about that work and uh, what it takes to, to make that survive and do well in Calgary. Sure. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to make that work um, and uh, for 
doing all of this. Uh, as, of, as a filmmaker in the city, uh, there's, I, I'm constantly learning stuff and I feel like I have so much more to learn. There's two things that I've learned uh, for survival in the arts. The first is love and the second is detachment. Mm. Um, the first being you have to love every aspect of what you do, in my case, film. Uh, it's almost an impossible uh, venture to begin with, so you really have to love it because you put in hundreds of hours of work and oftentimes uh, not too many people see that work and if they do, they might be comparing it to things that they've seen that, has, that have 10 times the budget you have. So it's very humbling and that's where detachment comes in. Uh, and I feel the other very important thing um, that most artists and most, most practices uh, need to develop is, is a detachment, um, a healthy detachment to criticism or self-doubt, et cetera, et cetera, because you have to constantly be making stuff. How many people, when you're doing a film, do you employ? Uh, anywhere between uh, two, myself and my director of photography right here, Philip Bowen, um, who shot what you just saw. Um, anywhere between two people, one person, often to upwards of 20 based on the project. So I expand and contract based on the projects that come to me. It's, a cra it's an amazing thing and a great uh, tradition. Thank you so much for being part of the, e the afternoon. Thank you. And we, we hope to be able to have a lot more young and emerging filmmakers and a lot more established filmmakers continuing to film here in Calgary with the opening of the Calgary Film Centre in just a few short Ooh, weeks. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, we've heard from musicians, from uh, visual artists, from um, theatre artists, from Bob. <laughs> You're welcome, Bob. Uh, from folks at the opera, from folks who do film, all of these different worlds that we wanted to help Franca and all of us get a little bit of an understanding of what this is about. What are your final thoughts? Well, I hope that that was helpful for all of you to understand both what it takes and the depth and breadth of creativity and artistry that is needed in order to put stuff on the stage or get stuff on a gallery wall or get stuff on the screens in front of you. It takes a lot and that needs a lot of support. And so we wanted to really make today about understanding that supporting the arts is about more than writing a check. And in fact, if you look in your program, you'll see a list of amazing people who won a contest to be here today, who are arts champions who champion the arts other than by writing checks, through volunteering, through assisting with their brains and their skills in helping artists do their work, and that's an amazing thing. But I want to remind you, as I do every year at this event, that we have to make the circle bigger. That I am talking, preaching to the choir in this room about the importance of the arts. And the important thing that we have to do between this mayor's lunch and the next mayor's lunch is increase the size of that circle. And as you know, there are three things you can do. Attend, promote, invest. Let me talk about each of those just for a second. Number one, attend. So I make this challenge every year and I want to make it again this year. This year, I want you to take at least one more person, preferably three people, to an arts event with you who have not attended before. Give them a chance to experience arts in this community. I'll give you a quick example. If you know a guy in his 20s or 30s who's not into the arts, I want you to take him this week to go see the fight or flight response at Verb Theater. It's a tremendous show, which I saw last night, and speaks to guys that age in a way that will open their eyes. So make sure that all those shows, it's a very small theater, make sure that all the shows are sold out. How many shows are there left, Cole? He was in the room. <laughs> it closes this weekend, so go, go, go. But do that throughout the year. And build the circle and expose more people to the arts, whether you're taking them to a gallery opening, uh, whether you're showing them the wonderful exhibits uh, at the Glenbow Museum or you're taking them to see the performing arts or a live music concert. That's one. Number two, promote. Do not be shy. Talk loudly and proudly about your support for the arts in the community. Do what I just did with that one show about anything you see or do that's great. Tweet about it and Facebook about it and talk to people face to face about it. Uh, and just make sure that people throughout our community and throughout this country know about the incredible value and depth of the arts in the community. And number three, if you can write a check, write a bigger check this year than last year. And I'm very serious about that because there are many, many, many 
people in our community who want to give. They want to give and they just can't right now, not in these economic times. So if we are lucky enough to be able to write a check, we not only need to write a check, as Randy says, and resist the urge of not writing that check, but write a bigger check than last year. Because we need to make sure that these artists are continuing to work with the massive, huge salaries that Nikki is paying them. Um, but that they're able to not only do what they love and move their careers forward, but also continue to make sure that Calgarians in those schools that Nikki goes to, in those student matinee performances and throughout this community, have access to the kind of arts that ignite the imagination, that ignite creativity. It's not for nothing that Calgary's Arts Development Plan is not called Calgary's Arts Development Plan, because that would be boring. It's called living a creative life. And a community that is creative, in which every single citizen has the opportunity to live that creative life, is a community that ultimately is economically, financially, but more importantly, socially sustainable. That's how we build community together, by supporting one another, and by supporting the creativity in every one of us, and particularly the creativity of those who make their way as artists. So thank you all for being arts champions. Thank you all for being here this year. We'll see you next year when Ken Limaquelo is the host. And... <laughs> we'll do a leg wrestle for it. I'm in, I'm in. Oh, one other thing, just because he does this for us every year, and he's such a wonderful guy and such a great community guy, I'm giving Dave a couple of plugs. Go see Dave Kelly live. I hear it's good when I'm not in it. Um, but number two is there's a wonderful little side project called Best of Calgary, which is giving us an opportunity to really talk about what is wonderful about our community. And that conversation is a community, a conversation that we need to have in this community. So, Dave, I'm giving you a chance to plug it. Best, best of, you remember Fast Forward Magazine. Uh, so we're just taking that and saying we need to still celebrate greatness. In June, we're gonna have a big event with a party at night. And during the day, we're gonna say, what is the best of Calgary? Who are we proud of? What can we make better? And how do we do that? So, and, and if you really, really wanna thank Franca for her amazing inspiration for today, the thing she loves the most in the world was those four years in a row in the Fast Forward thing where I won Calgary's Sexiest Man. So just make See. her happy again. <laughs> When you got the six pack, what do you do, right? <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, and before we go, Mayor, I just want to make sure we thank TELUS Youth Arts Showcase folks for helping us, all our sponsors, the Juno Prize Pack people, Strategic, again, thank you very much, and all of you for being here. And, and all the great volunteers who organized today. It's an incredible amount of work. Thank you all. Have a great time. Thank you for cooking everything. It was so good. Thank you. Thank you to everyone here at the Stampede. I'm just, I just keep saying thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.